maybe we've been doing this wrong all these years. After surgery, what do we do to patients? We stick a bunch of tubes in them, we stick them on a bed, and we have them lie there. Now, does that help deep breathing? No, it actually makes it bad. So they're, they can get pneumonia, they can um, have what we call deep vein thrombosis or clot in their legs because they're not moving. So over the years we've realized, wait a minute, patients do better if you free them up, get them up and ambulating, in fact, the day of surgery, and get them sent home. And this product, Salviso, fits along that, which is get rid of the drains, get rid of the tubing, and really free these people up to move. When I got the idea for the company, the three things that were the problem with IVPCA, I felt, was uh, the drug being used was morphine, and morphine's not a great opioid. And so I wanted a better drug for the patient. I wanted a better device, because I wanted a device that you couldn't accidentally misprogram. With a decimal point error, you can give them 10 times the opioid they're supposed to get. That, that's a huge problem. So better device, and then the last thing was better route. I thought the IV and the tubing was just not helping mobility, it wasn't helping freeing the patient up, and so I wanted a non-invasive route of delivery. So that's what we sort of um, termed the triumvirate of safety. Better drug, better device, better route. This is truly a Silicon Valley product. I mean, it was invented here. Um, we went to a very famous industrial engineering firm called IDO in Palo Alto that's world famous for their design of products. And this was actually called the Penguin. If you, <laughs> you can understand why, because they had a lot of different ideas. But I remember what I was thinking of was something that the patient almost uh, dispensed under their tongue like, like a big pen you can imagine. They had a little stack of pills. So when I first saw this, I thought, no, no, that's wrong. That, that's nothing like I had in my mind. But of course they were right, because my way was probably fraught with difficulties. But that's the fun thing about being a doctor and coming up with a solution to treat a medical problem, but then really going to experts and saying, hey, this is what I want to do, but you guys are the experts in this. What, how would you do it? and they came up with a brilliant um, design along with our internal engineers. This is what we call the controller. And this is the patient side of it, and IDO was very good. They said, make it simple. Because what patients said they wanted is one fat, big fat dose button. They don't want to be looking at it going, what button do I press? This is the button you press, and there's only one button. Then they want to know, am I in lockout or not? So there's an unlock icon, and when this is on, there's a green light here and it means dose is available. When they dose, it flips to the locked icon and there's a blue light, meaning you gotta wait for 20 minutes. The nurse side of the device has a few more buttons. They can turn it on, they can press menu, they can toggle up, toggle down, and they have a whole menu that's displayed on this nice screen here. This is the actual drug cartridge. There's 40 little tablets. We used to call them nano tabs, but now we just call them tablets and they're about the size of two sesame seeds. Then the last thing the nurse does is she takes this bandage, the little thumb t adhesive thumb tag, that's got an RFID chip. This actually goes on the patient's thumb. And so once that's been matched, this device, only the patient can activate the button. There is an RFID reader in the button, and it knows when this thumb tag that it's been matched with works. The FDA's um, tough as they should be, it's been 10 years in development. We've done 13 clinical trials. When all was said and done and we filed our original new drug application, what came back to us in July, we thought we were going to be approved in July. Instead, we got what's called a complete response letter. And basically, what it had an issue with was not the drug. Safety and efficacy of the drug has been demonstrated, and there's no question around that. It really was around the new device, and there was a couple of things that they wanted us to kind of shore up on the device. And uh, we spent the last six months doing that, and we think we've been successful, and so our plan is to submit back to them the new data and hopefully get approved in the fall.